My name is Karen Brown, Hi, and we're going to show you how to make and carve little feather earrings. So you can paint them in any design you want, but tonight we're going to show you how to do a real pheasant feather, which is a multicolored speckled feather that came out of the tropics, something for the summer months. Um, today we're going to start off with a little piece of scrap wood. This is a little thin quarter inch piece of bass that we've drawn our feathers onto. And we're going to use our mini jigsaw today to cut these little guys out. So I would go ahead and get started on that. We have a coarse blade in our saw. And this is a Microlux mini jigsaw. And we're going to start out by putting the foot uh, and the wood together and holding the wood tightly against the base of the cutter, turning on the blade, and then putting the blade into the wood. As long as the blade is in motion, you can pivot and turn the object that you're cutting, which allows you for a great deal of versatility with this little saw. All right, we've got the first side all cut off. Now we're going to cut off the second side. You don't want to force the blade or the saw to go any faster than it cuts on its own. If you force it, it'll heat the blade up and the metal in the blade will lose its temper and it will cause the blade to break more quickly. So we'll just be patient, let the saw do its work. All right, now we're going to separate these two from each other. And there's one, and now we'll do the other one. And we have our second one. We've got our two little leaves, or our feathers, or excuse me, feathers are cut out. And then we're going to take our rotary tool and we're going to put a diamond drill bit in. It's a cylinder, which means it has no point on the end. It's just loaded with diamonds up on the sides. So we'll insert that in here. Every time we're going to carve, we always want to use our carvers on high speed. The faster it turns, the smoother the cuts will be. And since we are carving, we want to use it at high speed. When we're sanding, then we'll cut the speed in half and sand at a much lower speed. All right, so we're going to draw the center lines down these pieces. As you can see, we've got our center lines on and all these. I always cut extras when I'm doing little projects like this because, number one, you can break them because they're so small and so delicate. So what we're going to do is we're going to mark our edges first. We're going to put our wave lines in because we want a little action to the side of our feather and we want to repeat this on both edges so they marry each other, so they look like a pair. Like so, and we'll flip them over, do the same thing on the other side. As both of these tips go down, we want them both to come down. All right, and we have those drawn up. Okay. Then what we're going to do is we're going to use the diamond here, and we're going to stay on the line, but we're going to cut into these edges on the dips, on the down dip. So we're going to take out the three, four dips on this side of the feather, We'll flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. And the tip we want to pull towards us so we don't buck that burr off of there and bite on the wrong side. All right, now we'll, we've got one side done. The side's on top. We'll get the dips cut in, so we're going to flip it over and do the dips on this side now. Now you can see that the wave has started to happen on the edge. As we cut into these, we'll make these little divots. And we're just going back and forth. We're going to clean them up a little bit, round them over. This is a fast, fun little project. They don't take long to make, and they are very attractive when they're done. They're very lightweight. OK, with that one done, we'll do the other one real quick. And we'll start with just putting the divots in on the sides. And we'll come back and do my other side. Again, we're going to come back in and clean that up so it's not quite as rough looking. Thinning the edges down. We can leave a lot of the weight of the piece right in the center because the thickness here won't matter as long as the edge looks 
very thin. As you can see on these pieces, their edges are very, very thin. But the centers are not. They're much thicker than the edge. It just gives the illusion of thinness because the edge is so thin. Okay, and last what we're going to do is just round over the stem of this feather just a little bit. We want to leave it fairly thick, thicker than it normally would need to look, so we have some wood to work with when we do the earring attachment of the wires and the rings that we need to make these into a pair of earrings. I also left these stems a little long so you get a little bit easier to, place to hang on to it while you're working painting it or wood burning it, which was our next step. Just round them over just a bit. Okay, we're going to switch. We're going to switch this to, this is a coarse diamond. We're going to switch this to a fine diamond so we can take these down and smooth them down really well. I'm watching the thinness on the edge that I'm working on into the dips as well as evenness of that edge as well. So a nice and smooth edged. That should just about do it. Now we have a rough carved out. And yeah, we're just about ready to start on that. We'll shape those tips over a little bit more. But I want to show you a second way to carve these when we're working. You can do these with craft sticks, your popsicle sticks. What I normally would do is I have a, a little clamp on these that I will put on here. Okay, we're going to put a clamp on here using one of these little band clamps. We're going to take two popsicle sticks, we're going to line them up together, and we're going to crimp them together. What this is going to do is this is going to hold them into position. We're going to put our coarse diamond burr back in. And this is how we're going to carve them together out of the popsicle sticks. We're going to round over the tips and make them, instead of rounded, we want them a little more pointed. So we're going to take off a little bit on each side of the shoulders. If we do them both at the same time, then they'll both be the same. In theory, that's what we're hoping. And there we have the pair. They're both the same on the tip. Now we're going to take the popsicle stick apart lay them together, we're going to draw the center line down, we're going to figure out where our cutoff line is going to be and in our stem. So now that we have these carved for our feathers, we're going to put them back together with the wrong sides together so we have pattern on both sides. And again, we're going to use our little clamp to crimp them together up at the top this time because we're going to narrow this down right in here for the stem on both of these feathers at the same time. All right. Now we have our little paddles made out and we have our feathers drawn on. And the nice part about doing them on the craft stick is that you have something to hang on to while you're working on them, where the ones that we cut out do not. All right, we're going to be on to our wood burning step next. If you want to, you can take a little bit of sanding paper or sanding mesh and just sand these down just a wee bit if you want to. Because these are bass, bass is not notoriously, gets kind of fuzzy when you carve it. So I just want to get my light. This is 320, real fine sandpaper. Just give them a little once over, knock off any of the extra fuzz that may be left on. Okay, our next step is to start our wood burning. And when we wood burn on these, I normally use a uh, spear point, something real fine, flat, uh, has a nice point on it so that we can get right up to the center line and do the burnings on these pieces very tight together. We want 40 to 50 lines an inch, so the thin, fine blade works really well for doing these type of line work. And magnifying glasses help so that you can see in the fine details that you're doing when you're burning. Now I'll start out and I'm going to burn the center line first. That gives me a start and stop point for each one of my pieces of the feather we're going to burn after this. This one I have grooved, so I'm just going to follow along in the groove that I burnt, or carved in, excuse me. Flip it over, do the same thing on the other side. 
And this is probably the longest part of the process is the wood burning. But in order to make the feathers look like miniatures of the real things, you want to take your time and do a good job. And this wood burning is the premier part of this look. The finer the lines that you can get on here, the more realistic the feather will look once we paint it. Now comes the little lines. I usually start at the tip. And I go from the center line out to the edge. This makes it easier for you guys to see what I'm doing here. Lines don't need to be terribly deep because the paint we apply is going to be extremely thin and we're going to do many, many layers of it to give the feather more lifelike appearance. All right, so we've got half done. And we'll turn around and do the other side. You're always going to find that one side of the feather is going to be easier and faster for you to burn. Now, some folks may say, why paint this at all? They like it just wood burned. You don't have to. But I would suggest that you varnish it just to protect the wood burning and to give a little more strength to this thin feather. Because the wood is thin and they are fragile when they're this thin and this small. All right, so we've got the one side done. And we're ready to start the second side. I'm going to switch and do this pair now because I've got the sides already done. Again, starting at the tip. And you keep your fingers out from underneath the bottom of these when you're burning them because that wood does get hot and you can feel it right through the wood because it's so thin. Okay, I'm going to start on back on this side again. So you can finish this one up. And now we have both sides finished. Next page is ready for paint. Okay, when I start my paint, I'll lay out dots of white because this feather we're going to paint has a white base to it. And I'll use a little bit of the Payne's Gray. I don't necessarily want a jet black on it. I'm going to drop a water in each one. I'm going to take a little bit of the gray, mix it in with the white. We use this paint very, very thin when we put apply it to the feathers, but we want to mix it at its regular strength. Just slightly thin so we can mix. Make sure all that dot's mixed. We'll take a pile of that and go into our next one. These are our base coat colors. By doing a white feather, we want them in sh darker shades going up to the white final shade. Okay. We're going to start with base coat, and we're going to start off with our darker color so that we can work up to the lighter color, and we'll build on top of it. So we're going to thin the paint down on the brush so it's fairly thin, more like a wash, a watercolor wash. I'm going to apply this to the whole thing. And I always paint both of the feathers on a set at the same time so that we're using the same color of paint on each one. Okay, we'll do both sides. Okay, we have a nice even coat all the way around. Take off any excess moisture we see on here just to tap off just a little extra. Got a little heavy in some spots. Well, there's our base coat. And we'll let that dry a few minutes and we'll clean our brush. Dampen the brush and we're going to go into the second color now. Again, we're going to thin it down before we start with it. Roll the brush out to a point. And this is how we layer in each of these colors as we're going. Start up at the stem and pull it right out to the edge of the feather. Doesn't matter if you get one on top of the other, one's further apart than the other, doesn't matter. We're going to do multiple layers of this on these feathers to bring it back to almost white. But we want to leave all these undercolors showing as well. By giving all these undercoats, it's going to give us a depth to the feather that we would normally see in real life that we don't see if we don't put the layers into it. It looks rather flat otherwise. I learned how to do this from our carving instructor, Richard Fry, and multi-layered paint technique. I normally let these dry well between each coat, but because the paint is very thin, it has a tendency to dry rather quickly. 
and we want to keep moving, so we're going to put a fresh drop of water down, and order the next lightest shade, thin that down, roll it to a point, we'll start on this side again. Oh, this is um, a 10 aught liner brush. It's real fine, very thin, has long bristles on it, so it'll hold quite a bit of paint, but it gives you a nice sharp point to work with. I like the liner brushes for this type of work. It, it uh, holds enough paint that you can do several strokes without stopping. And it works real well with the thinner paints because it is so fine. And I'm going to do this side. Basically, just trying to get in between the last couple of rows we did. Now, I know the feather looks fairly dark yet, but we have this highlight white to go on. And we'll put two coats of this white on. But it's going to be the thinner of all the paints. And this we're going to try and get almost all over the feather as we're working. Because it's so thinned, it will be transparent. And a lot of these other colors will show through. But we want to brush in the directions of the lines we cut in with the wood burner. So that the paint goes where we want it to. And that way we won't lose all those beautiful details we burned in with our wood burner. So you can see the side is really whitening up compared to the other side now. And we're just about ready to add color to this one. Okay, on our example, we're using the, a little peach on here, a little lake blue. And it's a little burnt sienna. And a little burnt umber. Let's see. Oof, a little too much. What I normally do is I will download pictures from the internet of these feathers to work off of. So we're going to start with our yellow, which will be our lightest color. Never using thick paint, always nice and thin. In this project, when we're burning feathers and working on details, fine details like this, we want to be able to see the feather work that we burned in. So we want to use really, really thin paint so we don't plug all that up and ruin all of our hard work. Okay, so on this one, Yellow runs down the center, right next to the stem. And it's just underneath. Yeah, we're going to take a little bit more yellow and come right all the way down to the tip with it, right next to the stem. We want to do this on both feathers. And we want, to, we want it to look to make sure that the tips are going in the same direction. So that way we know we are, we're on the right side up. OK. And we're going to do a thin stripe on the other side, same way. Make sure it's on the same side that we started on. I originally did these first little feather as a competition piece for a miniature under two inches. Over. Now we're going to put the peach on. Go back to our first feather. Again, thin the paint down again. Okay, and we're going to lay this right in, right in next to our yellow. On this side, there's just an edge of peach along there. So we're going to make it just a thin line of it on the back side. There, now we got a little bit of peach on. Next we're going to do is our blue, and we're going to thin it down again. This is just a stripe down the center. It's off on one side, so we're going to highlight our spine with the blue. We'll flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. And we'll do the next one. This is where the liner brushes come in handy. You can do a little bit longer line. So we just got a little bit over on that one. We'll fix it after the paint dries. When you're carving on raw wood like this and you're going to paint it the first time, it sucks up a lot of paint. So when you mix your first base coat colors, you always make your first one a little more plentiful than the others because you're going to use a lot of it because the wood will soak it up right away. I'm just going to draw the rest of these lines back out to the tip. Okay, we got our blue on. All right, we are ready for our dots. For fine dots, I like to use toothpicks. I find the end gives you a perfect pointed dot every time. It's a little easier to control the paint, and you can watch it. Now, this paint we're not going to thin because we want that consistency of the color of paint on here. We're just going to take small dots, and we're going to start putting them in where they go on the feathers. And these are done in almost in rows, so we want to dot them in rows. Good. We got one side done, and we'll do the second side. You don't always want the same number of dots in each row. That one done. We're going to do the same on the other side. So you kind of place your dots in the same along the same lines as your 
veining that you wood burned in goes. Okay, that side's on that one. We'll do this side. If you want even finer dots than what we're doing here, you can also use a straight pin and put the dots on with a straight pin. All right, now we got our little dots done on that side. We have the other dots on the other side, which are actually darker. And then we'll have the ones we're going to do right up along the stem here. And see, there's a set on either side that are up to the stem. We're going to wash in a little bit of brown in here right now to give it that second side a little extra color. We're going to do that with our little bit of our white. Just a little bit of this brownish. All right, same thing on the other side. Back side of this one. All right, just a little bit of yellow. As you can see, we've used very small quantities of paint because we're painting something very tiny, so we don't need a lot of paint left out. And just hit a little bit of highlight and up next to the blue on the top, next to the stem. And I wanted this one on top so that it would e more easily be seen on top of the brown. We'll pull that back down into the feather a little bit so it's not quite as hard to edge. We'll do the same thing on the back. There's one. All right, on that one, let that dry just a little bit. And then we're going to put the darker spots in. We have black dots running on either side of the stem on this one, so we're going to add it to this. So we got the first row of dots on. We're going to get ready to do the next one on the other side. All right, so we got that one done. We'll do the next one. And one more side. All right. We have one last set of dots to do, and that's the white ones that go along on the brown side. So we'll go back over here to our white paint, pick some of that up, and start putting spots on these. Same way we did with the dark ones on this side, we're going to bring them back out in rows Starting at this vein and working our way back out. I chose this feather because of its complication of the paint job. But any feather that you're going to paint, regardless of whether it's just one color, still will have multiple layers of paint on it in different shades of that color to give it the depth it needs to look more realistic. Okay, we got that one side done. So we're going to flip it over and we'll dot this one. And there we have it our little white dots on that one. So do them on this one, and it'll be all done. A little heavy on that one, just pull a little paint out of those grooves. Okay, do one more side. Okay, and we have our little feathers painted, and we are all set to now attach our wire rings, wires and rings to make our earrings up with. We're going to change over, put our drill back on, but we're going to put a very fine drill bit in to bore a little tiny hole for our ring. Start out by putting these little pilot holes in first because by using this micro bit, it's going to allow me to put the larger bit in there in exactly the right spot so that it doesn't break or move or slide around. So we use the micro first and then we'll put our finer bit, our regular drill bit in. I have a diamond. There we go. Come on, baby. There we go. We're going to need a couple of split rings. And these are soldered, which means they do not have a split in them. We need two of those. And a couple of earring wires. Now you can use posts. We just happen to have the wires with us tonight. And a couple of earring backs. Take our split rings and open them up. And we want to thread on one of these little feathers we just finished and one of the soldered rings. And we're just going to push this split back together. Now that is just a little long on the end there. So I'm going to take my side cutters and I'm going to trim off just the very end of this one. 
So now that ring will fit right over the top. Trim it up just a bit. There, perfect. Again, we're going to take our split ring through the hole, put on the soldered ring. Close them up. Okay. I'm just going to open the back of this up just a bit. Slide this on. Close it back up. Same thing on this side. Open it up. Slide down the soldered ring. Put on the earring nuts. And we have a really nice pair of feather earrings. So I hope you've enjoyed this. It was a lot of fun to make them. And you don't have to paint them in this manner. You can paint them to match any favorite bird that you would like. I hope you'll try this technique and wear them proudly. Thank you. Mm -hmm.